Hey guys. So we're talking a little bit about BlackBerry. BlackBerry is making a, a comeback and um, Kevin, uh, BlackBerry Kevin from Crackberry is, is uh, he's quite a, quite an interesting fellow. I, I suggest you Google him, but he's put on a petition. He wants to bring back um, BlackBerry. And I think that's amazing. And I'm definitely one to support it uh, and, and kind of advocate for it a little bit. So I've been, for the last year and a bit, I've been figuring out ways to restore functionality to these devices. And if you look at my YouTube shorts, you'll see that I've got a lot of videos out there that demonstrate, uh, you know, the the device's ability and the ability to write, you know, custom software uh, for the device and compile software for the QNX platform. Now, I'm heavily restricted. I only have term 49 uh, and then, you know, the people at, at very much that I'm using their their little system as a base because it has a bunch of pre-compiled uh, Clyde tools that, that you know, I got started with and I want to give them proper recognition and, and appreciate their efforts. But I've taken what they're doing and I'm just kind of expanding it, you know, compiling more software and and doing that more and more and more. Um, but when we when we talk about bringing back BlackBerry, I got a couple of thoughts. The one is. You know, we have to focus, I believe, on hardware and QNX. So we need we need to make good hardware and we need to support QNX. QNX is a very unique operating system. And if you do any research into it, um, I think you'll 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 see, you know, you research what's the difference between a microkernel uh, architecture and a monolithic architecture and why why did BlackBerry do things better? You know, when I picked up a BlackBerry and I started using its software and I started experiencing the reliability of it to execute tasks all the time, like whether it's notifications, they always came through, whether I'm multitasking like 10 different apps at the same time, I have, you know, the resources on these BlackBerry devices weren't that great, but they still perform amazing, right? But the hardware, so they combined, you know, an excellent architecture with excellent software with excellent hardware and that's why you know you pick up this this uh you know um, over 10 year old device this blackberry passport and you're like wow that screen is really good wow that keyboard is good wow the device is super thin and it's thinner than new phones right it's thinner than new phones and it, it's it's good like the camera's good it's a decent phone and 10 years later it's operating with the same quality it had when it came out of the box and I love that. <laughs> I, I think that's amazing. Um, as one who likes to, uh, you know, I like buying good products. So, so, but anyways, we have to we have to focus on QNX, and and I think BlackBerry needs a lot of help um, with QNX. They're putting it in embedded systems, and I, and I challenge you to go read up about QNX because that is the key I feel to unlocking a a, Black, a BlackBerry comeback. That's one of them. The next one is the hardware, both of what they can do. And now comes the strategy. So we are on the cusp, and, and this is very opinionated, so forgive me, but I think we are on the cusp of a very fundamental shift in computing. For example, UI isn't that important anymore from, uh, it's not important anymore. We will, we will be generating our own UIs in less than a year from now. I'm already doing it. I wanna generate a Mac OS UI for this phone. You can go Google MacBerry and you can see how I generated a, a UI for the BlackBerry, right? And so we're moving beyond user interface and it's driven by a couple things. When you go to chat GPT and you punch in a command and you say, or you punch in a query, a prompt, it returns your, your, your information. If you go to perplexity and you say, tell me the news today, the AI re returns the information and we are spending less time in UI like user interface, we're spending less time interacting with technology the way that we did two years ago. We are, we're going to a system where we enter a prompt and we hit enter. What's so interesting is the shell has been that for me for 15 years. I SSH to a terminal, I punch in a command, I get my output, I go fix my problem. And what's interesting is the shell is transforming into natural language. Because people are, are are starting aware, hey, we don't want to doom scroll. They're starting to be aware that, hey, we don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. Um, we want our time back. We want to feel productive again. And this is a trend underlying, which I feel is bringing back BlackBerry as, as we see it. But um, so, so I think there's this unique opportunity where 
if we use phones in a future from now, I believe they're going to be a shell in which we type into them or we talk into them. Most people say we probably just talk into the AI. I like talking to the, the chat GBT agent. It's pretty good. Um, but we we type and we talk into them. And 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 so it's like right now, if if I said I need to send a text message to, you know, 10 people, you, you go to you open your phone, you send a text message. But realistically, as a dev right now, you know, I hook up to Twilio API and I say, hey, agent or, or cursor, or whatever ID I'm using, uh, write me the curl command to send a text message to 10 people and it executes a runs done. One prompt, I get what I want. And that's the kind of uh, mobility that's coming at, or, or that's the kind of ability that's coming to the marketplace very quickly. It's this new generative ability to execute big things very quickly. I can one prompt a, a, an entire accounting system. I can one prompt so many different, you know, applications. But what I've noticed with the BlackBerry, like this 10 year old device is something very unique that some people are starting to figure out. So this this device has a has a micro uh, USB, okay? In in the terminal application, as soon as I plug in whatever device into this micro USB, it creates a serial connection. Okay, serial is a very u universal uh, connection protocol, communication protocol to talk to different devices, many things. So, for example, I take this old passport. It has term forty nine, and I have compiled a program that interfaces my phone with uh, with ChatGPT's API. And so I can execute commands for this phone directly on the device. So I type AI on the phone. I say, here's an old radio, you know, an old ham radio. All right, interface through serial, got it. It does the, the command because AI writes all the code. It writes the C code or the Python code to execute the connection. Then I say, rewrite the software as I see fit because I've built the interface, right? So if you look at my 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 YouTube channel and you see, um, you know, Mr. Robot over here and, and you say, you know, Matt, how are you making Mr. Robot dance and talk? Well, it's the exact same process is I interface the AI directly with the hardware and then I get the AI to write the code that controls the hardware. And then you have to contextualize. I mean, you need good, you need, a decent set of fundamentals and you do need to think like a programmer but um the, the ability to execute his his on those kinds of things has happened so just the other day you know i take this device i plug in an obd2 card reader into my car i connect with bluetooth it writes the bluetooth you know connection driver in python to start pulling obd data from my vehicle and i'm sitting there like holy smokes um this is the future, right? So the future of the BlackBerry device needs to be generative and it needs to be able to interface with everything, right? And, and I know that there'll be, there'll be a lot of pushback here, but um, if, if we start viewing technology as something we can truly control, like I can take my, my BlackBerry phone, I plug in an ethernet cable, I connect to my router and I say, okay, Let's get into the shell of this router. Let's re rewrite the software. Let's replace open WRT with something else. And I and I get AI to write the C code or whatever to generate a new UI for that router. That is possible today. And we need to build something that allows us to do those things because that's that's really putting the power of technology in people's hands, right? And And I think... You know, and I might be, I, I live in a, a bubble of my own development world, right? So I, I might not be considering, well, people want this in a phone or this in a phone. And, and you know, people still want to scroll X and stuff like that. But even with that, the reason that BlackBerry lost the app war was because it couldn't build apps fast enough. The community couldn't build apps fast enough. Now we just generate the Twitter app. I go into the, I can do it right now. I can go into the term 49 on this device. And I say, okay, here's my my X API key, which is four hundred dollars a month. Uh, generate me, a, you know, a Python based X app, and give me a, a a UI that's compatible with browser ES5. And boom, there's my full Twitter app. Right. Uh, the challenge with Twitter is that the API is locked down. The challenge with WhatsApp is the API is expensive and it's locked down. Um, and so 
if we built a, a device using QNX, you know, it's got a micro kernel, which is very good for embedded systems. So I suggest you do some research there. Like why, why is QNX better than Linux? What's monolithic kernels versus micro kernels? And there, there's, there's a bigger debate here. People say, well, micro kernels are this or that, or, not, you know, and monolithic kernels do this really well. There's, there's all kinds of debates, but I believe if you, if you understand operating systems at the core level, you'll be like, oh, wow, QNX and generative abilities, integrated language model, integrated AI, boom, we've got something really, really special. And BlackBerry can sit back, have the, uh, you know, the, the generative AI that's in the phone create the apps for the user. It doesn't have to, you don't need an app store. You need APIs and you need, you know, access to those APIs, but the phone, the UI can be generated, right? Like, and that's what we're going to find. And I, I think there, there needs to be a phone that hits that market. And I know this might sound like crazy talk, but we're living in, in, in a realm that, if you're paying attention and if you're in this realm, we're living in a realm where creating videos with text wasn't possible two years ago. And now you can make full on videos, right? With text, with prompts. And so we need a phone that's generative. It has those abilities. It says, hey, I don't like my X app. Okay, boom. Hey, I want to I wanna interface my device to my music equipment. Okay, boom, done. Right? We need a device that becomes kind of like a hardware API for all the technology that we have. And, and that I believe is the way to come back and resurrect the device, right? But they have to trot a line of saying like, are they gonna be an AI company, right? Are they set up for that? Maybe not, but there's a huge win there if they do it, I feel. And, and, and they're in enough systems, embedded systems that they're a long-term play could be okay they build a phone it has their ai it has you know their their back end situation guess what you you sit in your car oh wow there's the blackberry embedded system protocol boom your phone is now in control of your car and you know all these kinds of different things but now i'm just kind of pipe dreaming um so anyways i just wanted to share my thoughts that that you know having having doing a lot of interfacing a lot of a lot of de dev with ai the last year and and the fact that i'm using my my BlackBerry more and more and more from to a decade ago because it has a shell, because it has the ability to compile systems, because it supports all the protocols I need, right? Like HTTP and all the programs a developer needs. I can take this BlackBerry and I can interface with anything. And, and you can look at my channel and, and there's proof of me controlling my robot with it. And there's proof of me compiling software look with it. And and uh, and I, I love it because I'm not getting dinged with updates every day. The device just runs. It just works. I, I compiled um, Apache. So in, if you look at my my berry store um, dot swift dot com, I compiled like a web server. And, you know, I, I take this cable. It's really funny. I take this. Uh, this is a cat five uh, um, micro USB cable. I plug this thing in. Right. And then I boot up my Python or my Apache servers. And I plug this thing in port forward from my router and this little device is running a web server online, which is, you know, it just shows you the, the diversity that this device has. And, and I go to my iPhone and I'm like, oh, I can take really good pictures and I can doom scroll. And I'm like, I can't do anything else. I mean, you could, you could download ISH and you could do a little bit, but, um, you know, and, and, and Android you know, Google's tentacles are, are, are all over the damn thing. And I just have no patience for restriction uh, in the age of AI. And so I just want to be able to write, compile what I want, do with it what I want and solve problems, right? Because we need a device that helps us solve problems. So, you know, I'll, I'll finish with, with some of these more examples, right? Um, in the future, there, there's going to be a doctor or somebody who, who studied medicine and he's also going to be a little bit of a dev. He's going to, he's going to understand that medicine is going to need APIs. We need data. We need blood labs. We're going to be able to have to see all this because I take an x-ray with a, with my phone or with, or sorry, I take a picture of an x-ray, upload it to an AI model and, you know, 10,000 uh, x-rays in one language model studying an x-ray is going to give you a lot better results than somebody who's doing it manually. And, and so we need that device that assists 
the doctor in his job. We need that device that assists the construction worker controlling, you know, his new robot that is is freaking out, you know, and all these different things. Um, and uh, and I think that's where technology is going to take us. Now, I might be, uh, you know, overly zealous because I'm a dev and I, I think everybody should learn programming fundamentals because it teaches you how to think of a think a certain way that's really useful in today's world but uh but yeah i think it's going to be really interesting so so let's bring back blackberry those are my thoughts on it i wanted to share it what they're doing uh with uh with this whole mo uh, momentum is really important and i just wanted to share my thoughts about it and and you guys let me know your feedback you know am i crazy am i am i am am i onto something i don't know but i wanted to share my thoughts and uh so thanks so much for listening and uh yeah we'll catch you in the next one